you know close that front door because the gaadi ki awaaz aa rahi hai Ravina welcome to first post thank you my dear listen uh, you know we have to tell them that we, we have the secret relationship going and we've coordinated our colors <laughs> today <laughs> are you making it public eventually shouldn't we oh my god i'm really scared now <laughs> <laughs> yeah i i am also very scared <laughs> i want to know who we are scared of so just like people who are unaware of this side of me <laughs> 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 to tell me, tell me something. Two thousand one is when you started, no? Yeah. Yeah. And see, I I want to know about uh, the change that you see in the actors now. You know, like the like. Do, don't you think you know, there's like a major obsession with the way they look? I want to talk about airport looks. Okay. Now, see, that's not our fault. Okay. Yeah, no, 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 no. The no, way I... the whole trend has changed, which is so much more comfortable earlier. Yeah. Now. Everyone is under so much pressure. I mean, I tell people a retired housewife like me now, I have to be careful what I'm wearing and how I'm going to pick up my kids and go here and go there because there's someone waiting to photograph you and put you on some fashion site. Yeah. And then those fashion sites are waiting with daggers and judgments and full-on judgments <laughs> as to how do they know what I'm comfortable in or what I'm not comfortable in. Yeah. But they want me to wear something. So earlier, people used to ask me, "So, what is your sense of, uh, you know, fashion?" I used to say something that I'm uncomfortable in. Today, yeah. I say <laughs> I'm uncomfortably fashionable. Ooh, that is a headline. Actually, you know, before my battery dies out, I want to tweet that we are going live now. We're going live. I said going live on first post watch me now Yeah watch you watch us I was not watching Oh you watch me I watch didn't us. see you self centered that was very bad I should have done It's not the thing but then it's okay I you're good know. you're living up to my expectations of an actor <laughs> it's perfect <laughs> God damn okay anyway I tweeted it Yeah super watch her now live on first post right now Yes Now tell me something um you know one thing that Thank you ye charge pe laga dijiye phone please We have to I don't have charge okay. My battery was running out huh Haan. No, I'm saying I don't have chai anyway. It's okay. No, you want? I see. I have always planned, and love is sharing. No, no, no. So please no, pull I out was, this no, one I cup was, from I, that side. Otherwise, it's going to fall on your hot tea. Yeah. This Since we're at a, it, let's. No, no, no. Dada, no problem. We'll do it. This like is quite said, a candid share. chat, huh? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. We have we have <laughs> always been candid. We're distributing chai also. Yeah, lo. Cutting chai. This is called. This is called. Because one chai is cut into two. Cut it's called two, cutting it's chai. Called superb. Yeah. See, I'm giving you the major portion. I'm this giving the small one. Cheers. She's breaking the stereotypes of an actor. <laughs> one who's not self-centered enough. Stick, How long do you know me? Uh, listen, we're in a relationship. You've got that. Uh, can you please be honest for once before my husband actually <laughs> we, bans me from coming back home tonight? Me, oh, don't don't worry about me. I don't think he'll have a problem with me <laughs> at all. <laughs> he he shouldn't see competition here. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Tell now how, how long and how long you've known me to be a self-centered person? Zero. But then we've known each other for ten minutes now. Exactly. Yeah. Good. I'm mm. I'm a judgmental person. <laughs> Sorry about that. Now tell me something. See something that I'll never call you. is politically correct sadly yeah you know, i'm trying very hard i love it <laughs> i'm trying very hard to be politically no, correct but you've always me. been like you know this person who, who would Who's speak who's foot in the mouth disease no you <laughs> don't call it a disease it's, it's it's a perfect syndrome to have no it's honesty i mean yeah. yeah i'm not rude i i don't believe that kind of honesty is great where you actually going to be rude to a person on his face and say oh but i am honest i will say what i want i am too good yeah i don't i think that is rude yeah you know there is a certain decency also that you keep uh so i i but i'm honest with the way i feel for example if i don't like a film i won't say i'm so cool i'm so honest that i'm going to go on your face and say oh i don't like your film mm. i go and put it another way that oh i felt you know maybe this should have happened instead of that i would say it like that yeah. rather than being rude uh, so there's a thin line that you cross from being honest and being rude downright rude do you go for screenings no And believe me, everyone, stop calling me also because they know what I'm going to say. Oh, have you ever like gone outside a screening and said I didn't like this movie? Well, you know, I made the mistake of doing it to a very, very dear <laughs> friend's movie, and which my husband was distributing, and they had some other distributors who were watching. I didn't know. I thought it's it because it was a screening in the house. Yeah. So there were one, two, three, four people, and and everyone suddenly turned and looked at me and said, "So how did you like it?" And I said, uh, you know what? I think I should be running home because kids are waiting, and uh, you know, baby, I think you should wrap up. And I said that, and I didn't know that poor distributor. He left the film here, yeah, 
and thankfully Anil was there to take over. Yeah. But I didn't know there was an outside. I thought it's just four of us. So, I mean, yeah. After that, I have not been invited. So, really, now you know one week before or two days before the release of the movie, nobody wants to listen to anything bad about it. I'm not Especially on anyone's list. Especially in a private screening. Yeah, pri no, I really thought. I mean, yeah, if it was a, a screening, I would have said, yes, it's nice, but maybe it's not my kind of a film. Yeah, yeah. I would yeah. have said that. Yeah. You know, well, that's. Still yeah, what is there? Now, you have to say, no, sometimes that it's not my kind of a film. Because yeah. sometimes my uh, I, I have different sensibilities sometimes. Are there so many films? My films which are not liked. There are people who've come and said, oh, you know, sorry, we didn't see this film of yours. And I say, yeah, you didn't miss much. I... <laughs> I have actually said that. <laughs> tell, me, tell me some other time when you got into trouble because of your honesty. All the time. <laughs> <laughs> All the time. Are we, are we not pointing out on one, are we? No? No, no, yeah. There's been uh, many times where uh, uh, sometimes even Anil says like, why don't you just keep quiet? <laughs> You're just saying what you want to say. So, no, tell me initially a no. lot, uh, earlier on a lot, mm. because uh, I think people didn't know how I was as a person earlier. Yeah, so, yeah. Uh, maybe this honesty came to them at a certain point. They used to think, oh, you know, maybe she's being too sweet or she's faking it or this and that. But over the years, those same journalists who wrote uh, real rubbish about me today turn around and say, you know, you're one person who's been consistent as yeah. to what you are. And yeah. today, uh, you know, and I always used to tell that time will tell. Mm. You know, the truth cannot be hidden for long. It yeah. is going to come out. The mask is going to fall. How long can you keep up a pretense? And that has happened with most of the things that I was accused of earlier. It turned out right. Mm. As in turned out right as what was, uh, you know, uh, yeah. something that I was saying. Yeah. And it was proved right after a while. So yeah. people did then realize that, okay, fine, now, you know, this is what I'd been saying along. But earlier on, I was being panned for it. Mm. Now, see... Uh, all the characters that, have, that you've done in your career, leading up to now, Matra. Tell me, tell me, how do you sort of realize that when you pick a character, how do you understand or how do you decide that this is something that audience wants wants to see on screen? Um, okay, let's be honest about Matra. Now, Matra is a film with a very strong social message. Yeah. I had been offered a lot of movies in recent times and stuff. And uh, I didn't uh, do many films. Yeah. Some of them were horror scripts, some of them were comedy, some of them, you know, yeah. uh, a lot of films. In fact, the two films also which I kind of said yes to are in the, this thing. I'm still sussing how strong the script will turn yeah. out. Uh, there was one film offered uh, to me which was a very nice comedy with Parish uh, uh, Rawal in the lead. Okay. Okay. Uh, Gulab Gang was offered to me. Kya Kool Hai Hum was offered to me. There were so many of these horror thrillers that were offered. Hmm. Chashme Badur with David. I mean, I would have loved to work with David all over again. Yeah. Um, but somehow, uh, you know, the way I've evolved or the way I am as a person, I believe very strongly in social messages. Mm. I've been a social activist uh, quite uh, yeah. uh, all my life. Yeah. And I did believe that if I do a film, it will be something which makes a difference, mm. you mm. know. And uh, when this was a burning topic in me since I read about the Nirbhaya case yeah. and then many numerous cases after that. Yeah. Yeah. And I tell people that we are, uh, you know, in this state uh, in, in our country right now, which we're talking about a progressive new India, going into a new India. Mm. Uh, technologically, economically, we are booming in every way. Yeah. Then why? Is it that statistics show that crime and violence against women is on the rise? When we come from a country where our, our, our women were worshipped as goddesses, where our, uh, you know, whether they are mountains or they are rivers are named after goddesses. It is our motherland. We call it Bharatma. So where has that gotten lost? You know, our women wrote the Rig Vedas. So agreed because of multiculturalism and this and that and everything when uh, different systems came and different cultures came and there was a fusion yeah. and things did change for women over the years. Yeah. But today when we talk about a new India, an educated, liberal minded India, then why are these statistics still going high? Where mm. is it going wrong? And this is what I believed in very strongly. And every time being, being a mother of three daughters, actually, I do read these stats and, and I, I believe that somewhere, are we becoming indifferent to it of reading just another rape case again another day, four days mm -hmm. later, mm -hmm. five days later, again another one? Then have we become uh, numbed to this somehow? So it's yeah. time that this, this becomes a serious issue. Yeah. 
in so, the time where we are today, I mean, I, I read uh, Jaya Bachchan's uh, 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 quote today, which she in the Rajya Sabha has, has right. said this yeah. very clearly that we are in the time where we are giving life sentences for killing cows, but what about protecting our women, True. where rapists are going scot free or are being gifted sewing machines or I mean, are these incentives? So, which world are we going towards? So, this is something that concerned me, and then when Matra script came along. I was like, this is close to my heart. This is not what I'm going to say no to. I'm going to do this film for sure. And in terms of the audience, you thought that this is something that would resonate and people would relate to. You know, I'm not claiming that my this one film is going to change the entire mindset of the country and it's going to bring about a, bring a, a, a big social revolution. Yeah. No, it's not. But the kind of responses that we've got, we've nearly hit 10 million views. Wow. And the reactions that we're getting of the trailer, yeah. where people are actually carrying out now, you know, uh, the, the youngsters are actually debating on this, discussing this, and they're realizing that time has come where this has to stop or this has to change. We have to change those laws that were made 70 years ago, mm. which don't, uh, uh, don't relate to the world that we are living in today. Yeah. You know, so it ha we have to change with the times. Mm -hmm. So when youngsters are talking about it, debating about it, I feel it has touched a chord somewhere. Someone sent me a social link where, where these youngsters actually carried out an experiment on the roads of a certain city. Yeah. Actually carried out an experiment and infused our trailer with it and said, this is the situation. So what our media is talking about is true. It's time we took action. So when youngsters stand up and say, we need to take action, that action needs to become a voice. That voice needs to become a noise. Yeah till the time it resonates where it is meant to be heard. I think out of the 10 million hits that you, people who have watched the trailer, I think even if you can change the lives of 10 people, it's, it's That's success. That's what I tell people, yeah. that fine, our trailer is a success already as to what we wanted to achieve. Yeah. We wanted the message to go across. It is touching the youth somewhere. Even if five people come in the theatre, to see because let's face it we all know realistic films and films with social messages don't a have a family audience because not commercial there's no song and dance yeah but it is a hard fact of life yeah but somewhere even if those five people come and are aware of what is happening or like how these 10 million hits it has touched somewhere yeah you know and the message has gone across so youngsters watching this the boys watching this turn around and say fine we are going to make our workplace and make life for our colleagues and we are concerned about them much safer Mm. You know, if they start helping out in their own areas, whether it's a classroom, it's the workplace, it's a hostel, it's a college area, yeah. I think it will make a difference. It's our entire mindset has to change. And I'm sure it will happen. I the, hope so. Yes, I hope very so. very interesting. Now tell me something, when you have a professional doubt, who's that one person who you turn to? Oh, no one can get better than my husband. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he's somehow, he's like I, I tell him, you know, the one in the, with the hits in the family is him. So I, I keep, I, we've come to a conclusion. Yeah. He will release films like Bahubali and this and that and whatever, which are short, short hits. Yeah. And I will do films which are, which are with social messages. So we've covered it all. Yeah, so you have a... We have someone who brings the hits balance. in the family. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and I'm someone who wants to do who, what I believe in. Superb. Yeah. What about your personal life? That is that again an ill? Who do you turn to when you need an advice? Um, Don't now tell me it depends and all what that and kind of an advice. No, I mean, yeah, if it's something which is, uh, uh, you know, I need to talk to. I used to talk to my uh, father in law a lot. Unfortunately, yeah. he's no more. He passed away last year. Uh, I talk to my dad. Uh, mm. And. Uh, uh, yeah, and of course, if it's maternal advice, then it is my mom and my mom-in-law, which they've always helped me through. My mom-in-law has been great with my kids, bringing up my kids. Uh, yeah. uh, when I brought up my earlier daughters, they were already 8 and 11 when they reached me, so mm. it, it was already a different experience. But to have that small child in your hands where, uh, you know, I've always been a pet mother all my life. I was not sure how I needed to handle a baby. Yeah. And um, it was my mom-in-law because Anil's sister just had, had babies. Yeah. So she was damn good at it. In fact, I've never done night duty. Only my mom-in-law's night <laughs> done night duty for the kids. She used to let me sleep through the night. She said, you sleep and I'll sleep in the day and then you take over in the morning. Wonderful. That's a yeah. That that's a big relief. I'll tell you the Indian being the, no 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 the uh, Indian joint family system is the best in the world. Yeah. Yeah yeah yeah. We take care of our old my, and we my, are our younger brothers. Seeing this up. Huh? Why? I've always believed. I've said in every interview of mine. I'm telling you, our Indian joint family system is the best in the world. There was a reason behind everything. We take care of our old and our young and our young are also taken care of. 
you know so yeah. i think it's it's the best the very fact that i can put in so many hours of work whether i'm doing my reality show which is sabse bada kalakar mm. which is coming on sony tv yeah. or if i'm doing i'm doing my endorsements i'm doing a film now i finished honors film so i have been doing on and off a lot of work i write columns the fact that i can concentrate and give this many hours is because i know mom's got my back yeah. nani's got my back or dadi's got my back you know so mm. that is a great help here super now see the the kind of media intrusion that's there right now is a lot right there's a lot of us and hardly any good ones like us <laughs> now tell me tell me you know like when your personal life is on a spot all the time does it get difficult um i think it's a little too late in the day for you to ask me this i suffered yeah. this in the 90s <laughs> most definitely because some crazy stories i would hear about myself yeah. and thank god for social media today that you can you know correct everything and that clarify, was going yeah. wrong and clarify instantly with proof yeah in those days we were uh, i mean helpless yeah. yeah you know completely in the hands of uh, yellow journalism and whatever they felt like writing whatever the headline would They're sell just they yeah just they used to yeah 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 So it oh was god. it was gone so so many people used to meet me and say oh my god you're not at all what they write about and yeah. we say what can we do this is the way it is they want to sell their magazine and souls would be sold to the devil so you just not help it and you'd wonder like you know what the hell yeah, yeah. you know how can they write something that is so untrue mm. but that's the way it was so today i think it's uh, not that bad in fact oh, cool. honestly what's the worst piece of career advice someone has given you Now let me see. I never listen to anyone. And that's a different The best end career end. advice once Yashi had told me. Yeah. Because when I entered the industry only I had started saying oh I'm going to work for 5 years then I want to get married and I want to settle and I want to have babies. Yeah. So every interview I'd say that. And then one day Yashi was hearing my interview Yash Chopra ji and he turned and said beta I said ji yeah. why do you keep keep telling people this people will not take you seriously. You have so much going for you. I said, yeah, but that's how I entered the industry. Also, I consider myself in the industry by completely by default. Mm. I was not meant to be here. Mm -hmm. That's how I got in by saying no to numerous films and yeah. So that's why I think I've always had that confidence to live my life according to my rules because yeah. I've not been under anyone's obligation. And you know, so I don't uh, expect any favors okay. in return or whatever. Yeah. So it's it's been a very clean slate for me always. So I've done what I have thought how I wanted to do and what I wanted to do. Mm. But Yashi had given me good advice at that time. Please take your career seriously. Unfortunately, at that time I didn't. But yet I have no regrets because I believe it's a it's like a parallel universe that I change anything at that moment in time yeah. and have any regret. I might not reach where I am here so today. So very true. Yeah. 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 What's that one movie that you didn't want to do but then you ended up doing it and it turned out good uh okay which film i didn't expect it to be this i mean you didn't want to do or whatever in the beginning but then you did it anyway probably you thought you it didn't work it wouldn't work for you uh no movie like that in fact there are many movies that i wanted to do and i thought i'll turn out a certain way but it didn't turn out a certain way yeah, okay. yeah in fact that has happened the reverse has happened so yeah, in fact here i want to ask at like at what point when after you start doing a movie do you realize that this is not going my way like the way i wanted to oh it does while filming only yeah yeah in fact i had a fall out with the director because i believed in the realistic kind of cinema that he used to make mm. and the movie that he was making suddenly started becoming so commercial that it was losing its sensitivity where as i thought that this is not what i had signed up for yeah. and in fact we had a little bit of a fall out but then i did complete the film and stuff and ha, so how does that happen so what see you understand that this is not working out for you uh, after that how do you sort of uh, still give your 100% see ultimately the, the director is the boss right yeah. Yeah. but yes it was it was not turning out the way it was mm. and uh, i did try and rectify a few things by saying that so you know this is not real what we are shooting this does not happen in reality yeah you know but he turned and said who is the director of this film me or you and then i knew that maybe i was overstepping my boundary and to give him his due respect uh It was a bit of a fallout at that time because I was disturbed by uh, I didn't want the wrong message to go through because sensitive subjects need to be you know handled very delicately. Yeah, yeah, it yeah. can go wrong. Yeah. And that is what I did not want to be uh, involved in. Mm. And uh, but then ultimately the director is the boss and you do have to listen and I completed the film and I have all respect for that director because he's a great director. Yeah. You know. 
but unfortunately sometimes you know some things can go wrong no absolutely has there ever been a scene like a particular scene in any movie that you've done that the audience have applauded everybody has laughed but then when you see it now you can see the mistakes that you've done yeah you know there's this film gulam e mustafa yeah. the scene where my mom is dead in that scene and i'm talking to uh, nana yeah. and i'm describing that this is my mom so many people come to me and say oh my god what a scene and we just loved you in that scene yeah. and this and that and i'm like i see it and i was like i was such a kid could i have handled it more maturely now you know so yeah there's some places where i do feel yeah, like feel have, yeah okay. what what happens when people are like uh um, Are there problems because of fem- because you're a female actor in Bollywood? Is there um, like a question that that comes your way? I mean, in general, with female actors. No, and I mean, um, I don't know with actors normally, but uh, yeah, there are times where I have felt that the hero takes the call, mm. and I've uh, stood up and said so very openly in my interviews as well that I've experienced it too. Yeah. Where uh, you know the hero would be taking the call of have you know me. having after signing films being dropped out of those films because the hero's girlfriend had a problem with me because she oh, was in wow. competition yeah. with me so that's happened with me these kind of politics but uh, like i said uh, i might have been hurt in the bargain but uh, i believe intentionally i believe if you have a clear conscience you intentionally have not hurt anyone mm. i think you can sleep well at night and Absolutely. that's what i do yeah now so how, how does it feel when you do a movie like matra when where you are the lead you're the face of the movie How does power feel? There's no power, yeah. I'm just totally exhausted because <laughs> because I'm the face. I'm only doing all the promotions. <laughs> yeah. So I'm like really exhausted. Like I was telling someone, I'm ready to retire again. I have worked so hard, only, which I'm not. I'm telling you, yeah. only. I've worked so hard in all these days in this one month that I've not worked in the past ten years. So no, I'm okay. Jokes apart. Yeah. But uh, there's nothing like uh, power. In fact, we're keeping our fingers crossed and hoping because, like I said, let's be realistic. A a social message film something like this uh, where we don't have family audiences to a certain extent uh, we have uh, you know pre teens and teens and yeah. then further on we have those kind of audiences and we'll have the audiences who are concerned about what is happening in today's uh, world but it's a very uh, hard hitting strong film yeah. so i hope the message goes on and like i said i'm keeping my fingers crossed listen we, it's all about the law of attraction so we're putting it out in the universe that this is going to be a super hit just say i it. hope so when the trailers no, 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 are a super no, no, hit no, no, And yes okay let's put it out yeah. i yes uh, it's going this, to be this yeah. this film is going to be successful I, <laughs> yeah i will not say i hope that okay <laughs> yeah yeah so they just put it out there so put it out it for me yeah. say it for me uh matra is matra is going to be a super hit thank you so much yeah uh i will uh, tell you more about this when i review the movie i have to be a very ethical <laughs> person when it comes to this <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't want to get bashed online. But talk about, <laughs> <laughs> talk about this. Let's talk about social media. Um, you're quite active on social media. You, you yeah, like I said, this is right like now, uh, yeah, yeah. I, I enjoy it. Let's talk about the trolls. Have you ever had people trolling you? Yeah, yeah. I've had people threatening me also, being abusive, threatening, wanting to murder me. and everybody yeah i want these people to get me yeah. yeah i get i also get somebody somebody once told me when i reviewed a big movie like a really you'll be surprised very spokesperson of your political parties who are women have also trolled me <gasps> so that is the best part and i've actually said i'm I, i'm surprised that you know that women considering that you troll someone about this because yeah. why aren't we allowed to put in our views and to the context of that um, uh, i mean it's actually very very surprising that uh, you know very Uh, highly respected uh, ex uh, ex uh, ex gossip magazine uh, editor yeah. uh, turned uh, you know uh, someone who sets the narrative for things to happen around mm-hmm. us um, actually had made fun of me on her facebook page when i was giving my views on intolerance mm-hmm. and uh, actually there were people who were saying things like random ravina and two bit actress ravina also has a view point so what if i'm an actress Am I not a citizen of this country? Of course. Don't I have children who are going to be the future generation of this country? Why am I sh- not allowed, because of my profession, to be allowed to give my viewpoint yeah. about what is concerning my country? Yeah. And the no, way, absolutely. and the way, and and the way this country is going to shape up ahead for our future generations to come. Yeah. Am I not? Have I not gone to school? Have I not gone to college? So why am? Why is my freedom? a voice being taken away now does it affect you does it hurt you or does it give you the power you know i feel like it sort of uh, 
triggers you to uh, it does because do somewhere better. their masks are falling yeah you understand the very yeah. fact that they are getting insecure about people like us standing up and talking for our country mm. is where their masks are falling yeah. because all i said is that i think india has been one of the most tolerant nations all through centuries and centuries of invasions that we've seen mm. centuries of uh, invaders have come into india massacred us and we still move on strong and we've accepted those people their cultures have imbibed into india's cultures and we live gloriously today like one of the biggest secular democratic countries that is there or democracies that is there in our in, in the world today so i am proud of that fact and what i was trying to tell people at that time when this whole intolerance debate came yeah. up is that you know somewhere if you are against a political party is against a b political party hit out at each other bring out each other's faults but don't drag the country in because mm. when you generalize you're dragging the whole country in you're giving the whole country a bad image yeah. which includes you and me which includes him him and everybody because we make up this country as well so it's not only a political party which is making up the country or, or becomes the country's spokesperson mm. it is the common man it's citizens like us so when a washington post and a new york times and all these other countries whether it's the uk globe or whatever these papers when they start writing india becoming intolerant we lose out on our economy you yeah. understand because the foreign brands and corporates lay off they say my god there's solid trouble in india let's not go invest let's not go there now apparently people are getting murdered on the streets mm. which is not true there are fringe elements on every side everywhere the worst kind of racism happens probably in uk and us statistically there are more cases of racism happening mm. in these countries but they don't call their countries racist or intolerant have you ever heard a us a, 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 a republican or a, or a or a democrat sit up and say america has become intolerant because of i mean everyone knew what was happening right mm. with the africans the, yeah. with the american africans and the whites in in me. in america everyone knew it was it was raging all over but did you hear one of the politicians sit down and say america is intolerant Mm -hmm. No they said we have a problem and we are going to deal with it that's the way you go ahead with your country but you don't bring your whole country down in front of the world because yeah. ultimately people who will suffer will be people like you and me because when our economy takes a nose dive is the common man that will suffer true so so basically see right now there's a part of the there's a part there's a big mass group that's going one way who who's one opinion and when you being this one minority that's uh that has the other opinion how does it work out doesn't it is that scary i don't think so i think it's wrong to say that the mass has a certain opinion no i'm talking about this issue when in the, fact i think as far as this issue went hmm. if you if you ask the common man on the street yeah. he'll have a different opinion from your one person who's sitting in south bombay very happily uh, you know going for cocktail parties in the night and having a different opinion and bringing everybody down hmm. so that is completely different Yeah. Yeah, you so know? I mean keeping this apart if you have to take a stand about something and if that's and and if your stand is stands with the minority w would that be a problem? It's my opinion. Mm. Why should I follow a herd? Yeah. That's what I believe in. Yeah. That's what I feel. So has there ever been a piece of critique that somebody said about you that hurt you a lot and you slept with it but then couldn't shake it off? That used to happen earlier with yeah? me. Yeah. Now I don't care a fig. <laughs> yeah, that's the best way to be. Huh? I don't. Yeah. I, it doesn't matter to me. Earlier on, yes, when I started off and I couldn't handle this yellow journalism and this ta tabloids and gossip magazines, I just couldn't handle it because I came from a normal, stable upbringing, protected family. Yeah. And suddenly, when uh, you know, in a co-ed school and a co-ed college, and I would uh, hang with the guys like how you'd hang in college or in hang in school together yeah, yeah. i never said ho oh, he's a boy i'm not going to talk to him yeah. namaste <laughs> ji talk to my mummy ji i never did that i came from a normal uh, upbringing yeah. where if my brother was allowed to ride a motorbike i used to take my um, motorbike to college yeah, and i had an open jeep yeah. so i lived that way so i saw no difference this attitude of mine could not be uh, could was not in fact at that time i used to call the media narrow minded mm. i used to say you're narrow minded because you all make us that way 
that we aren't allowed to date yeah. we aren't allowed to talk to boys why because when i was in college i'm from a normal coed college yeah so i'm from a, no, a normal coed school where we were not taught ho don't talk to the boy hmm. so i couldn't understand media's attitude at that time yeah that if if you are with a female colleague and you all decide you all have had a hard day's work chal yaar ja ke let's grab a coffee mm-hmm. in a co- ca- cafe coffee day or somewhere yeah. so what's the harm yeah. over here if a with a male colleague i would just walk into croissants to pick up a sandwich and drive back home then there's something it happening there it had become yeah. a big thing oh my god now she's de- now she's seeing him why he is just a male colleague yeah you can't have chemistry with every second person <laughs> you shake hands with yeah. yeah yeah you know there's some guys who are platonic who are just friends and some guys you might just have chemistry with what's the big deal so i used to find the media narrow minded at that time now you've uh, gotten used to it or now i think it's fine yeah now it's it's, it's it's a change yeah yeah to so finally you know right even before, now i don't care yeah. now also yeah in fact when anil got married to me i had more male friends than a female coterie of friends yeah. you know who are still my friends who been friends with me since childhood yeah so the sad the sad part is we have to sit and talk about this because it's absolutely okay and this is not something that has to be even exactly. spoken about exactly it is so difficult in those yeah. days for heroines to get married because the media would make it so diff- difficult yeah. for us yeah. because before you had normally dated or even gotten to know someone had already gotten you married off yeah. and probably had a couple of kids also in some <laughs> place Uh-huh. So it used to be really difficult. Whereas college girls probably date or you know even probably change their boyfriends once in every six months. Probably if something is not working out, six months later they have another boyfriend. It's mm-hmm. fine. It's normal. Yeah. That's how people date. Yeah. But in our industry, no, that was taboo according to the gossip media. Finally, you know, right before we conclude, uh, something that's that that I notice about you and a lot of people have is the fact that you. um even if there are issues even if there are problems even if there are hard breaks you bounce back you come right back to uh your part and you you have a space in the industry and you back even if you step out of it even if you go back to your uh, uh cocoon you come right back so how do you how do you do how do you do this even if, even when all these problems are in the middle of uh, the crowd and put out there you come back how do you do this I think it's something my dad taught me long time ago. He had he always had this saying and he always used to tell me when I was probably at my lowest that when a child learns to walk he falls a million times but he picks himself up and he walks again till he walks with his head held high and learns to walk like a man. So do that. And that's how I mean I did yeah there were so many professional lows and personal lows but I picked myself up and I think I walked again and I shall do it again and again. Super Matra looks like a You big... told me this is not going to be a serious interview. This, this you made it like so candid serious that con- always <laughs> I've almost removed my sword and I'm ready to go to the battlefield. I'm so worked up right now. See, I think it's your vibe, Ravi. <laughs> I'm never serious. Like I usually like I have questions here saying how how do you react when co star hit on you? I never ask Ask because me, no, I'll be so you, happy. Ravina, how do you? I'm react? so flattered, <laughs> but they, I think most of them are scared of me. <laughs> she'll she'll create a movie about <laughs> social awareness tomorrow. <laughs> so someone asked me, "What do you think of the casting couch?" I said, "You know, everyone was so scared of me <laughs> that they knew I'll open my mouth and talk to them about it and humiliate that person so badly that nobody ever dared even proposition give me an indecent proposal like that." What? See now, see now that we are in this topic, tell me about. You, you know when now you're coaster. getting now your now clothes I'm, are coming out in, honey now, I'm, now, I'm, now you're sharpening your clothes you just oh clothes you say i heard clothes it and i was like oh, okay anyway uh, you realize your life <laughs> yeah that's okay i'm okay, great. i'm shameless like that <laughs> <laughs> see you gotten that out of me now yeah yeah you yeah, had yeah, this vibe yeah, of like yeah. i was like i have to go fight <laughs> now so i got into this mood no tell me tell me if a coasa ever has it on you when it used to happen or now if it happens how do you react Let's have two situations: one when you are interested, and one when you're not. Okay, no. Let's put it in such situations when I was not married and when I am. All right. Beautiful. When I was not <laughs> married, I'd probably get offended. That how can you think of me that way? Because I never thought of myself as a sex symbol or something Shut like up. that. Yeah. And then married men were complete taboo for me. Never ever. Most of the married men were my buddies, and their wives were my best friends. Huh. Always, all my co-stars. Huh. And uh, a, a few. So that's okay. Let's talk about eligible bachelors who hit on you. Eligible bachelors who hit on me. Now let me see. <laughs> 
<laughs> well, uh, it was very flattering. Yeah. But like I said, you can't have chemistry with everybody. Yeah. So there were few uh, probably who, uh, you know, I had chemistry with and probably I did date. Mm. Uh, but then it didn't turn out well or whatever. It turned out well, didn't turn out well, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Past his history. But now, uh, when uh, someone actually hits on me and flirts with me, I'm so flattered. <laughs> 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 Keep going is what Ravina says. No, no, no. It's uh, everyone knows, yeah. You I know, touch wood, and and uh, Anil is also such a gem. And uh, most of now we've been in the industry for so long, both of us. Mostly everyone is my friend. But in front of Anil only, they say. Like there are so many of these youngsters who come up and say, "Sir, you're so lucky. Yeah. You don't know. Yeah. You're so lucky. Yeah. You know." So they actually embarrassed Anil like that. But it's fun, yeah. When I see his face go all red and stuff. Super. I see. There's a birdie running around saying, "Your time is up. Time is up. Time is up." Well, if there's a Keshav birdie, tell him to uh, buzz off. No, it's not the Keshav birdie. <laughs> that's, that's a birdie with, the, with those white shoes on. Okay. Should I take a say? Fatih. Even I Fatih bought those just now. <laughs> Superstars. Huh? No. So it was very interesting, yeah, talking to you, Ravina. Thank, Thank you so much for spending time. Thank you so much. Master is releasing next week, and it's releasing on 21st April. So please go and see. Till then, also watch me in Sabse Bada Kalakar. That's yes. on Sony TV on Saturdays and Sundays at 8 p.m. And Master is releasing on 21st April. And also watch this interview again and again. And even if you don't go watch the movie, please take this message across. Be concerned about the girls in. And around your area, and uh, take up wrong. this course. You're putting, the, you're putting another. Uh, even if you don't watch it, cut, 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 cut. Take Let's it back. Start take again. it back. Please go watch the movie and spread the message. <laughs> yeah, that's it. We're done. We're done with the. We've, we've put the. We've put the message out in the we'll universe. Go, we'll go watch it. Yes. Yeah. Please go Thank watch you. the movie. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you so yeah. much. It was lovely. Super.